Students, these are my brief thoughts on the excerpt from this book, America, the Last Best Hope. So, let's do it. Uh, page 81. If you go, so again, he starts talking about Thomas, uh, Common Sense by Thomas Paine, and he says this. He says, uh, Josiah Bartlett noted Common Sense was, quote, greedily bought up and read by who? All ranks of people. So this guy is already talking about that common sentiment. Popular opinion is pro-common sense, is pro-independence. That's what the author of this book seems to be saying. <coughs> so if we, let's see, continue. Let's see, what else we got? Um, talks a lot about, you know, why, why that feeling of, why that desire for independence was there, increasing bitterness. Again, it, it seems like this is a widespread thing. There's no talk about, well, this group of people was not for independence while this group was. There's no talk of that. There's just talk of the American colonists wanted independence. Uh, finally, Richard Henry Lee does this. Um, he led the South. So then he says, you know, J John Adams writes, this is so strange. He, he puts in here that John Adams says, hey, Thomas Jefferson, he's the man. If he, if he can't write this well, nobody can. Um, and and I'm, on, on, I'm on page 83. He says this, and what a draft exclamation mark. Jefferson's peculiar felicity of expression gave America a founding document. Listen to the bias here. Listen to the opinion. It is dripping off the page. Jefferson gave America a founding document that surpasses any other in the world for beauty, totally an opinion, logic, eh, probably an opinion, an inspirational power. It's totally opinion. This guy loves the Declaration of Independence. About the philosophy of the Declaration, there was no debate in Congress. Really, there was no debate in Congress about the philosophy? Okay, interesting. It was what the founders believed. His immortal words were conventional wisdom, were, conven were, were uh, a, a accepted wisdom of the time. People just accepted it. And the words of the Declaration became the greatest, most consequential statement of political philosophy of the time. You know who would disagree with that strongly? Howard Zinn. He wouldn't agree with any of that. He would say it's not, con uh, it's not conventional wisdom. It's the, it's the wisdom of a few. That's what he would say. This is America's political creed in a, in a nutshell. And then he says this, where Howard Zinn says, hey, they were talking about only white dudes, wealthy white dudes with property. Um, William Bennett of Last Best Hope says, yes, they meant all. All is in italics to emphasize all men, regardless of race, religion, sex, or riches. There it is. Uh, and then, and then at the end of that paragraph, that first paragraph on page eighty-four, he says, "But we re must realize that all." So, so there he there. Then he goes on in that first paragraph on page eighty-four. Uh, the founders did not immediately give the slaves, uh, free the slaves, give votes to their wives, or invite Indian tribes to sign the Declaration. But then he says this: "But we must realize that all the greatest advocates for human equality in America." pointed to this passage, all men are created equal, in the Declaration to give force to, their, to back their arguments up. Howard Zinn doesn't say that. Howard Zinn leaves it at, these guys were kind of hypocrites because they didn't give many people the vote. They only gave the vote to a few people. This guy says, yes, they gave the vote to only a few people, but in the future, it gave the people uh, gave these other groups of people the power to argue for their for their rights. Um, 
And there it is. There it is. The, the last paragraph on page 86 seems to be saying, yeah, this is, was unanimous. Again, that's, that's in direct contradiction to what Howard Zinn says. I hope this helps you. If you have questions, ask me.